Hey everyone, welcome to the second part of the granular synthesizer video. So this is the patch as we left it in the previous video. We basically, let's see, if we activate the audio and we click on this message, we can send uh, the message 01000 to one of the instances of the MC line object, which, as we said, has 100 channels. So we can choose every instance between zero, uh, between one and 100, and send it this message. So the MC line is going to produce uh, a ramp of numbers that goes to play one of the instances uh, of the MC play object, which is going to play one second from the beginning of our sound file in one second. Now, in order to create the grains for the granular synthesis, we need to, to read a much smaller portion of the sound file, which, for example, we could say we read only 50 milliseconds of this sound file, and then we could choose, for example, to read them at their normal speed, so 50 milliseconds. So in 50 milliseconds, we read the 50 milliseconds of the sound file from the beginning, but we could also choose not to read the sound file from the beginning, so actually from a random position inside the, uh, the, the buffer. So in order to do that, we have to generate for every instance of this MC line object uh, a different envelope, so a different uh, ramp. And we can do that, for example, simply using some random numbers. So let's do it like this. Let's create a random object and say 1000, so it's going to give us a number between 0 and 1999. Uh, let's sum 1 to that, so we are going to have numbers between 1 and 1000. And let's maybe then multiply it by 0, 0, 1, so we get numbers between 0 and 1. So I wrote the range here, so it's a bit more clear. So these are numbers between 0 and 1 floating point. Cool. Um, then we could multiply this number by the duration of our sound files. So we will have that the numbers will go between 0 and the maximum amount of the duration of the file. And um, actually we should subtract uh, the duration of our grain to the duration of the file, which is 50. So we should subtract 50 from there. So um, let's then multiply this value by the length of our audio file. So let's maybe send it around like this. So let's call it audio file length in millisecond. That's a very descriptive name for a sender, that's good. And let's receive it here. So let's maybe pack this buffer in its own um, sub-patch. Let's maybe take the bang out and say buffer. So now it automatically reread uh, when it was created, the file is that u because we created a buffer again when we encapsulated it. So let's receive that here on this 1000. So we're going to multiply this random number between 0 and 1 uh, by the, the duration of the file, which sh should give us a random number that is contained in the duration of the file. So let's send a bang here. And exactly, we get this random amount. So this is the random amount in milliseconds. So we could, for example, here say $1, which means it will start at $1. And then we should say arrive at $1 plus 50. So we can actually do like this. Let's create a pack object with three float numbers. So this will be our starting point. Now the second number will be the starting point plus the duration of our grain. So we can do like this. And the third is how long it should take to arrive there. So let's create just a float number and uh, say also that is going to 50 that is going to take 50 milliseconds to arrive there. So let's write a couple of description. So this is our starting point in milliseconds inside our buffer. Then let's maybe make this bigger. Why not? We got space. And 50, this is the arrival point. See, arrival point in milliseconds. And this is uh, in how much time? also in millisecond. So let's say in 50 millisecond is going to arrive from whatever point to uh, whatever point plus 50 in 50 milliseconds. So let's give it a try. Um, let me maybe make this uh, sound louder by multiplying simply this by some numbers. So I'm going to create a MC multiplier. I'm going to create a slider and I'm going to scale the output of this slider from 0 and 127 to like 0 and 50 or something like that. 
So I'm going to scale this sound very loud. And let's see if we you can hear something. Uh, this sounds wrong because it's like sounds like the pitch is being actually changed. And you know why? <laughs> because I'm just sending this list uh, as it is to the MC target, which in turn sends it to the MC line. And it's actually wrong. What I have to do is to create a message with a comma inside between the, the first element of the list and the second element. Because the first element uh, with a comma means start from that point, then arrive to this point in that point. And what we were doing before was that simply we were arriving to the first number in the second number, so this was completely wrong. Uh, okay, so now it's correct. Exactly. So we're getting every time a random number. And then we're going to sum it to 50. And as you can see, we are starting every time from a different point in our buffer. Now let's encapsulate all these things inside another sub patch, which we're going to call it uh, like grains, params, something like that. Cool. Then I go back inside this sub patch, going to set this number to 50 again, and uh, let's actually create a sender in our main patch that we can use to modify this number. So let's create a receiver here. So this will be the max grain duration in milliseconds. Right, so this is how much we are reading in milliseconds, and this is uh, how long it's going to take to read that amount of file in milliseconds. So this is the actual real duration of the grain. So let's copy this receiver, let's send it here, and let's transform it into a sender. And let's simply use a float number box. So this is the max grain duration in milliseconds, so the maximum amount we are going to take to read a single grain. Cool. Um, now, if we want to create every time a different grain, but also uh, assigning it to a different voice, we can use the object that we saw in the second MC tutorial. And this object is uh, not a message box, but the MC voice allocator object. And let's give it 100 voices. So 100 voices. Uh, it has a different attribute than the MC than the other MC objects which have this chance attribute. The MC voice allocator somehow is an attribute called voices, but it's the same as channels basically. So what we want to do is to create a needlet here in our sub patch and trigger this random object, so the creation of the starting point, of the random starting point. We want to trigger it from the voice allocator which in turn is going to send out an integer number box out of the right outlet which is going to select one of the instances that is still free. So if we try to bang this, um, by default it's just going to cycle through all the instances because uh, it doesn't know actually which are free and which are busy. For for this object to know which voices are free and which are busy, it should actually receive a multi-channel audio input, and when some channels have the amplitude set to zero, then it will interpret as if they are free. So we cannot directly send it the out to the output of the MC play object because this is not directly set to zero. As you can see, there is still some audio playing here because we cannot be sure that uh, the end of our 50 milliseconds uh, duration is going to happen on a um, silent part of this audio file, right? So we need to create a, a method to tell it that after that amount of time, after our max grain duration, it should set this uh, voice as free. And we could do that with uh, another MC line object, also with 100 channels, so channels 100. And uh, we can do like this, we can create another MC target object. So we can create another MC target that triggers uh, um, one of these MC lines, according to which voices we actually using. And this is the same voice that uh, we are using for the play object. We also want to trigger the same voice for the MC line, because we need to say that when this uh, line is over, it means that the voice will be free. So we need to use the same voice of course. So we can tell it that from 0 we want to arrive to 1 in $1. So to this line we are telling 
that every time we start a new voice, so we start to read a new grain with the play object, we want to trigger also this line, which is going to arrive from 0 to 1 in time $1. And the time $1 is actually uh, this time that we choose here, so our grain max duration. And let's actually create another outlet and connect this here to the second outlet. So that we are sending out our duration of the grain, and this we will use actually as the time that we need to arrive to the end of the line. So from zero to one. So this means that every time we start a new grain, it's going to generate a random starting point. And also we need a way to trigger actually this message. So let's maybe do it like this. Let's create a trigger bang bang. Every time we are triggering this random object, we also need actually to trigger this uh, line object. So we could send, for example, a bang to this, uh, to this float number box here in order to trigger this uh, number, which is then going into this message box and is going to trigger the MC line. And then this MC line we are going to send inside the voice allocator because once the line goes to zero, then it's going to open the voice, uh, which means we actually did it wrong. We should say it starts from one and go to zero. Sorry, I did it wrong actually. So we should say it starts from one and go to zero. So when we first start the grain, the line object will start emitting the number one and then it will go to zero in 50 milliseconds, or the number that we decide here. And once it goes to zero, it means that the voice is actually free. So let's see if this is working now. It's probably working. Let's try it better using a metro object to which we will give it an interval of one millisecond. Let's maybe make the amplitude of the audio lower. And cool, so we're now going to trigger every millisecond this, this voice allocator which sends a bang to the grains parameter sub patch and it's going to trigger the whole thing that we just said. So let's activate the metro and see what happens. All right. All right. And if I click again on the length of the buffer, it's going to fill this multiplier, which I think it was not filled before. So now it seems to be working. Let's maybe reduce the density by sending a different uh, interval to these metro objects. Maybe make it a bit bigger. Yeah, exactly. Now it's working nicely. So we are playing a random piece of this audio buffer and uh, the playing time is going to go on for this amount of time that we decide here. And we are generating a line that goes inside the voice allocator, uh, which tells it that this voice is actually free or not. So that's what this is all about. I hope it's clear enough. Um, now, if you remember here, I told you that we need a window. Well, a window, is basically, as we say, the fade in and the fade out for our grains. And this we need it because if we just leave it like it is, and let's make the density very small. Now, these grains are actually clicking with each other because uh, when we stop them by sending a new bang to the same voice, their amplitude can still be above zero. And this means that this is going to produce some clicks. So in order to avoid those clicks, we can apply an envelope to those grains. And to apply an envelope, we can use a, what is called a window, which is simply a buffer that contains an envelope. So we can do, for example, like this. Let's create a new buffer and call it window, maybe cool window. And um, this buffer is going to contain our envelope window. Uh, we also need to give it a number of samples because we are creating this buffer from scratch, so it's not going to read an audio file, so it doesn't know how long it should be. And let's maybe say 1024 samples. Doesn't really, it doesn't make such a difference. How many samples we choose, just they must not be too few. Otherwise it's going to be a bit too low resolution. And we can send the message, fill one, and then apply, and then the type of window that we want, which for example, could be Henning, which is this type of window, you will see it in a second. So I click on this and open the buffer and this is what it created. So this is a nice envelope that goes to zero to one and then back to zero, following this nice curve. We could trigger this when we open the patch with a load bank. And I'm going to create a waveform to visualize this buffer. So I think I need to give it a buffer name. Cool window. And there it is our window. Nice. So this is our window. Now we just need to multiply uh, the amplitude of our grains by this window. 
So we can do it exactly like this. And we can read uh, using this line, this buffer, using for example an MC wave object, which is very similar actually to the play object. It's just going to read the world buffer uh, with an input that goes between 0 and 1. So 0 means start from the beginning of the buffer and 1 means go to the end of the buffer, so arrive to the end. So it will read the world buffer with a ramp that goes from 0 to 1. So that's exactly what we want. We need to give it the name of the buffer we want to read, which is cool window. And this, of course, is also an MC object. And uh, so let's do like this. This line object is now going to go inside the MC wave, but actually from 0 to 1 in this case, because we really want to start from 0 and arrive to 1. So we don't need to anymore the line to, to know which voices are busy or not. This we will do it with another, in another way. So we can set the line back from 0 to 1. And then we simply need to multiply the amplitude of the audio that comes out from the MC play by the window that we are reading from our cool window buffer, so our ending window. So we're just going to multiply this by that. And we should be all happy. So let's see if this is actually working. So yeah, it's actually working and it sounds a bit better. So maybe let's move this integer box because we don't really need it. It's just going to slow down our patch. Cool, let's maybe make it even more dense. Right. At a certain point, I think it's going to create some problems. <laughs> but it seems good enough. So, good. I want to stop here for this part. In the next part, we are going to finalize our synthesizer. We have basically got it. We just need to uh, set better the parameters and make it a bit more um, interesting. But basically the core of the audio processing is done. So as you can see, it's not really very complex. It's pretty basic stuff, uh, but the results are already interesting. So thank you very much for following. As in the previous video, I suggest you to check my website if you're interested in more Max tutorials, especially on the visual side with Jitter. And you can also join almost 300 people on my Patreon and uh, check out the patches I share there. So thank you very much. See you in the next and I hope final part of this tutorial and uh, have an happy patching. Ciao ciao.